Welcome back everyone. In one of our more recent videos, we showed you how to find a coolant leak in any vehicle. If you haven't watched that video yet, I will leave a card at the top so you can easily get to it. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix that coolant leak that seems to plague the first generation Coyote motors in the F-150s. There are two parts you will need to pick up from your local Ford parts dealer. The T-connector, which costs about $40 at the time this video was made, and also the O-ring that goes into the end of the upper radiator hose. This costs about $10. I have links to both items in the description below if you would rather get them from Amazon instead of the dealer. Now let's fix that leak. The first thing you want to do is put a drain pan under your vehicle to catch the coolant. Coolant tastes sweet to animals but is extremely toxic. The best drain pans for this job are the ones with an open top. I have some links down below if you do not have this style drain pan. Now let's remove the air intake tube. There are two 8 millimeter steel hose clamps you need to loosen in order to get the air box out of the way. Also, remove your PCV line. This will give you a clear path to the T-connector. Now take a small screwdriver or a pick and push the metal pin down on the upper radiator hose connection. Once there is a small gap, you can insert the tool in between the pin and the radiator hose to separate it. We can now disconnect the upper radiator hose from the T-connector. This is going to drain for quite some time, so while you're waiting, you can remove the O-ring out of the upper radiator hose and put the new one in. I do apologize that this was not shown on camera. However, it's very simple to get out of the hose with a small pick or a small flathead screwdriver. You will notice the old O-ring has flattened quite a bit. Before you put the new O-ring into the radiator hose, make sure you put some coolant around the O-ring to lubricate it. This will prevent the O-ring from sticking and possibly binding up when you reinstall the new T-connector. Once you have the new O-ring installed, push the upper radiator hose down to drain any fluid that may still be in there, and then push the hose up and out of your way. The next thing you want to do is remove your throttle body as this will give you even more room. The throttle body is easy. There's just one electrical connector at the bottom and then four 8mm bolts holding it to the intake manifold. That's it. Very simple. Once the throttle body is out of the way, you can then work on what I think is the hardest part of this job. Trying to remove the T-connector is kind of a pain. What I did was I cut part of the hose as you see in the clip here. This allowed me to get it off easier after removing the metal clamp. However, the T-connector just wouldn't let go of the thermostat housing. I worked this for quite a while, but it just wouldn't budge. So I did what everyone else does when they get mad at something. I took a hammer to it. Obviously, this is pretty risky, but if you run into this issue, make sure you hit the T-connector right here and not on the edge. Hitting it on the edge may chip off some small pieces, and the last thing you want are little pieces of plastic swimming around in your coolant, blocking your water jackets. Also, don't hit it that hard. I went a little overboard with the hammer, but I'm glad it didn't result in catastrophe. And make sure you remove any pieces that may have stuck to the thermostat housing. Chances are, if yours was stuck like mine, you will have a piece or two from the old T-connector that you will need to remove before putting the new one on. Now that the hard part is done, let's get the new T-connector installed. Start by putting the rubber hose side on first. This is a pretty tight fit, so you will have to work it back and forth for a little while. If you are having trouble getting the T-connector to sit on the thermostat housing, try this. Grab a screwdriver, or like I did, pliers, and place it between the pulley and the T-connector. Now gently pry your screwdriver or pliers up and move the T-connector back and forth until it slides over the thermostat housing connection. Don't get too crazy with it, as you don't want to damage that pulley. Just a little pressure and it should help it get connected. Now we need to get that metal hose clamp secured. So take some needle nose pliers from the top, squeeze the clamp together, and twist. The act of twisting should release the safety lock on the clamp. Let's get that upper radiator hose back on. This is easy. Slide it on, push the metal pin back into place, and give it a few tugs to make sure it's on there securely. Now that all the hoses are connected, let's get that throttle body back on. Line up the throttle body and start putting the 8mm screws back in. When tightening these bolts, I like to do a crisscross pattern to ensure it's completely flat against the intake manifold. I did not torque these down, so if you are like me, just hand tighten these. They are screwing into a plastic intake manifold, so the last thing you want to do is crack it from tightening them too much. And don't forget your electrical connector at the bottom. The last step before adding coolant is to install the air intake tube. Now make sure your PCV line is out of the way. Push the tube back into place, reinstall your PCV line, then tighten both 8mm hose clamps, and now all you need to do is add coolant. Okay, so this is very important to follow, so I'm going to list it out on the screen for all of you, so you can screenshot it if you are watching this on your mobile. You cannot simply put coolant into the expansion tank and think that's it. What you need to do is fill up the tank until you are about an inch or two above the coolant fill line. Don't worry, the coolant will go back down. Then you need to run the engine until it reaches normal operating temperature. Also, this is very important. Make sure you put your heat on in your vehicle. This will allow the coolant to flow through your heater core and push out any air that may be in your system. Once your engine hits operating temperature, you will see a drop in the expansion tank. This is due to the thermostat opening. Keep watching your coolant. 
If the coolant is getting below the bottom hash mark on the expansion tank, shut the engine off and wait for it to cool down. Once it is cooled down, slowly twist off the cap. If there is a hissing noise coming from the cap as you are twisting it off, stop and just back away. This means there's too much pressure in the system because it's still too hot. Wait for it to cool off. When you can remove the cap, fill the coolant up to the top hash mark on the expansion tank and then put the cap back on. Start the engine again and like before, let it get back up to normal operating temperature. Now this should bleed all air out of your coolant system. The coolant level may drop again, but only a little bit this time, if at all. Take it for a drive for about a half an hour. City driving works best for this. Once finished, let engine completely cool off and then check the level again. Top off as needed. That's it for this video. Please remember to hit that like button as it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Also, click on subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video from our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.